Welcome everybody back to the channel and today I got a car review for you guys and there's nothing other than a 2019 Infiniti Q60 Red Sport 400 rear wheel drive. So as you guys know with my channel I have a 2017 Q60 Silver Sport um, all wheel drive model. So if you're looking for like a common car review uh, you may want to visit one of the bigger channels that like car and driver and such. This is an enthusiast point of view. So I'm going to give you guys my take on this Red Sport 400 from my point of view and it's simple I'm gonna give you guys what I like what I don't like and mention some of the things that I'm seeing driving this thing over the weekend that I really enjoy that make it stand out from the competition to begin I started my drive at Austin Texas yesterday and drove it to Dallas and it was about a 200 mile drive that car honestly impressed the heck out of me um, it might have actually changed my opinion a little bit on the stock Red Sport and how it handles how it performs just living with it living with a day-to-day -day basis so this car, um, I drove it 200 miles. It has effortless passing uh, capabilities. And the throttle input doesn't require a whole lot to pass another car on the highway or on any road for that matter. It's very quiet, very calm, collect. Uh, but once you put your foot down, it definitely gives you exactly what you're asking it to do. Now, this color in particular that we have here today, it is beautiful, guys. This is a, they call this Superman combo, Captain American combo. It's a blue on red spec. It's actually what I initially wanted when I was looking for this car to buy. And uh, this paint has so many ways to look. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. But the one thing I actually do like most about this spec is the red interior. Um, you can't go wrong with the red interior. It's one of those things that most people were chasing after when they look for this car. But unfortunately, it's not something you can spec out. It's just, it seems to be at random. Now this model right here is equipped with the 20 inch wheels and I thought the ride was going to be really, really harsh and it's actually not. The digital dynamic suspension in this car, if kept in standard, it ke keeps the car in check pretty well through any little imperfections or bumps on the road. It actually keeps the car very stable and at, at any time that I was driving through a harsh road, I felt like the car was in complete control and I didn't have any issues. I felt overall pretty comfortable um, driving this car through the city, through the highway. It was really, really comfortable and quiet in the cabin. One of the major drawbacks of these cars usually they come with a set of run flat tires in this case I don't think we have that here we have some Bridgestone Potenza tires on them and considering that this car is rear wheel drive I could tell the difference because my personal car is actually all wheel drive and the weight difference you can tell immediately this car seems a lot more agile um, while taking turns while actually driving around town it feels a lot less heavy um, nose heavy uh, than, than the all-wheel drive version which is something I can definitely appreciate coming from an all-wheel drive model that I've been driving for almost two years now. Now that I've mentioned some of the basic observations of this car so far since driving it over the past day and a half let's get down to some of the things that I noticed while driving it and the first thing that bothered me which can easily be addressed even at the dealership guys um, the car yeah well yesterday was 105 degrees the uh, afternoon it was about 105 to 106 degrees there for most of the evening and this car driving through the city it got heat so pretty quick I could tell the car starting cutting power on me um, just driving through town the gas pedal would, would require lots more a lot more input to get it going and that's understandable um, this car is a red sport so it does have the dual water pumps but it does not have an upgraded heat exchanger from the factory that can easily be addressed by simply upgrading the uh, stock heat exchanger with uh, an upgraded uh, Infinity uh, slash AMS heat exchanger or can be done with any other uh, models there on the market but Infinity actually warranties that one if you buy it from them um, which is a no-brainer that would have uh, fixed all those heat soak issues you should be able to enjoy the car just fine without it cutting power at any given time I have that on my personal vehicle and I think it's probably one of the best upgrades you can get for this car for this uh, platform one of the drawbacks that I noticed while driving this car yesterday was the braking system I feel like a stock the pads need to be better they just need to be overall better they need a better bite um, they don't last very long. They start to fade out pretty quick. So yesterday on the highway, th even through some traffic, I noticed the pads starting to fade, which was surprising. So this car does come with a uh, four-pot uh, braking system up front and a two-pot in the rear. It's a 14-inch rotor in the front and a 13.8 in the rear. Now, um, the stock pads, I'm not sure exactly. I believe they're posse quad pads, but I don't think they're ceramic. I think just really um, regular metallic pads. They could use a better pad. Honestly, with a more aggressive pad, you, you should be able to brake a lot sooner and have more um, more resistance to uh, brake fade. Now, let's do a quick walk around this uh, Red Sport 400. You guys can see some of the differences from the other models, um, apart from the obvious red seats, which doesn't come in every model, by the way. It's the big red calipers that stick out to you and these 20 inch wheels on this Red Sport models. Of course, you can always tell 
the Red S. That is going to be the main giveaway. That is a Red Sport model. And actually, this is my first time seeing this car with black mirrors. That is very interesting. Um, so there you go. It's kind of an outside point of view, so you guys can kind of see. There's no spoiler on this car on this package, but either way, the Red Sports always have the exhaust with the little holes around. But let's go ahead and open the door and see inside this thing and what's included in this car, actually. So we have the red leather interior set up in this car. They also have the white and the black from what I've seen. Just like a stone color as well in some other models. But for the moment, this is the red interior, as you guys can see. Um, a lot of complaints on this leather. This leather seems to um, get ruined in this area pretty quickly. My car, after 5,000 miles, this whole side of the leather was, or this whole side of the seat was ruined. And uh, they offered to replace it, but I figured if it's just gonna happen again, I just decided to leave it alone. So these seats are really comfortable. I can take long trips on these seats, no problem. I can fall asleep in these seats, no problem. Um, they hold me in really great. It also has a button right here to adjust how much you want the seats to hug you in case you're doing something, you know, sporty, going to the track and stuff like that. You get your standard pedal shifters being a Red Sport model. You have your silver um, optic trim with your um, lighting that comes in here at nighttime. Um, we also have the kick plates, illuminated kick plates on this model. And uh, overall, this is a very tastefully um, spec here that we have, especially the Superman combo, as I would call it. Um, but the guys at Austin Infinity call it the Captain American combo. But either way, very tasteful package that we have here on this Q60. So after giving you guys a, a quick walk around and my initial thoughts on this car for after having it for the past two days, I want to give you guys my initial thoughts now from behind the driver's seat. What are some of the things that I like and I don't like um, of this car? Honestly, there is it's, I feel like I'm in my own car at this point considering I do have a Q60, but I've never driven a Red Sport 400 for longer than five minutes. So I can give you guys some of my actual thoughts towards the 400 model uh, and I know some of you guys prefer the Red Sport some of you guys prefer the Luxus so I'm gonna give you guys my initial thoughts and some of you guys who do value my opinion on this channel that's just something that I want to provide to all of you so by the way shout out to Austin Infinity for providing me with this loaner while my car is getting serviced um, and, and I can give you guys this uh, review of this Red Sport 400 so let's take it in for a drive really quick and um, So the first thing that I wanted to mention is, as you guys know, I've been an advocate for the Q60 platform for quite some time now, a little over a year. And all I can say is that I've always been saying, oh yeah, you shouldn't buy a Red Sport because it's a waste of money, it's much more expensive than the lower trims if you really want to modify your car. That is, that can be true or false, but honestly, after driving this car for a whole day and a half, two days, um, I can definitely say why the Red Sport makes sense and here's why. My um, thought process when it comes to the Red Sport is, I, I, considering this car has about 375 wheel horsepower, because it was underrated from the factory to begin with, 375, 380 we've seen on the rear wheel drive models and all wheel drive models, um, with around 360 foot pounds of torque to the tire. Honestly, this car, you don't need to do much to it. I think with an upgraded heat exchanger, if that's something you want to do, or you can keep it stock, but upgrading a heat exchanger if you live in a warm state like Texas, for example, um, it is very beneficial if you want to enjoy the car day in and day out. Um, and honestly, the power band in this car stock is more than enough to satisfy most people. Um, I, I do believe the more you do to a car, the more reliable it becomes. Um, <laughs> of me as an example, but that doesn't go without saying just sim just doing simple little things like upgrading the cooling system in this car it's going to give you a huge return in the amount of enjoyment you're going to get out of it so let's talk about this rear wheel drive model that we have here because initially i opted out for an all-wheel drive model since i started living in michigan and now live in texas now is is that going to give me any issue down here no not necessarily but if i would have lived down here from the get-go i probably would have gotten a rear wheel drive car simply because it's a lot more fun to drive especially um, if you're able to equip this car with a limited slip differential. Now, I know it does not come with one from Infinity Nissan. Um, you have to buy one. There's only a couple of vendors out right now. Um, that is uh, AMS Performance with their uh, LSD option. And we also have Z1 Motorsports who also offer an LSD option. Now, with one of those equipped, this car just becomes a whole nother level of fun. Um, you can actually control the burnouts, not do one more of those one wheel peels. And it's actually becomes, it's an enjoyment factor. Yes, it does cost a couple more grand to upgrade to something like that. And why is this car not equipped with one from the factory? That I do not know. But what I can tell you is I understand why they didn't put one in. And 
here's why. The reason why I think Nissan, Infiniti, they held back on this platform a bit from including some of those much needed things that us enthusiasts value in these cars, like a limited slip differential, is simply because they didn't think that this car was gonna catch the kind of popularity with the young crowd that it did. They were expecting this to be a luxury sports car that was more like a weekend car for maybe middle-aged folks. Uh, and this is something that I've actually discussed with several general managers at several dealerships. And but the young crowd, got a wind of this platform you know after it came out obviously the g35 350z uh q53.7 platforms all been out for you know quite a while with the legendary 3.7 liter engine but when this three liter turbo engine came out there was a lot more more to desire um after we got a taste of how the potential of this car so i honestly think they i don't think they dropped the ball per se but i do think um, they could have done a better job at actually including some of those key features that a lot of us would want in this car. With the limited slip differential, this car can corner at a lot more speed. You can actually control it to start to slide, um, but in an open diff like this, it becomes almost a hazard if you actually start to slip on a, on a tight corner if you don't know what you're doing. You can act almost actually you know, have a really serious accident. One feature that these Infinities have that I wanted to touch on briefly is the drive-by wire system. Not every model is included with them. I know I get this question on a lot of my channel and it's a common misconception that everyone assumes these cars have a drive-by wire system included and it's not, it's an option. Now, um, have I ever driven a car with a drive-by wire setup? No, but I see the horror stories of how much of a pain in the butt it is to um, align and sometimes I've seen the issues with the steering wheel is all the way upside down and the car is driving straight. Um, I've seen plenty of scenarios where the customer says the car is trying to kill them. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where those came from or what was the root cause of those, but all of those cars had um, a DAS drive-by wire system in them and more so version one. Um, since I believe last year when Infiniti switched out to the version two of the drive-by wire system, I haven't really seen a whole lot of issues with them um, other than the feedback that I got was from, is it more expensive to align at the dealership if it ever gets out of alignment or if you ever need an alignment? So those are one of the things that I wanted to mention in regards to the DAS system. I'm not exactly sure how it would be to have one from a day-to-day -day basis if I would like it, but personally, I like it being just the normal power steering is fine. The electric power steering in this car is actually not too bad. Um, and with the actual input of the drive mode selector, you can make it really stiff in, in the sport mode. Um, it's a consider it's a really big difference um, when you put it in sport or sport plus. The steering gets a lot harder to turn and nice and sporty for the track or a nice windy road if you don't want it too loose. But in my opinion, after driving my car for 18, 19 months that I've had it for now, the steering mode, um, the steering in standard mode is probably the best to keep it at. I think you, you get probably some of the best of the both worlds uh, in regards to the steering. But as far as the drive-by wire system, guys, I really do not know. I hope some of you guys can chime in in the comment section and let me know if you have one. What sort of experience have you had with one? If you had any issues, please comment below. I'm curious to find out. Now, in this video, I also want to be able to offer some of you who are watching this video some valuable customer feedback. So um, yesterday in this car driving on the highway, I got about 28 to 29 miles per gallon uh, with the cruise control speed of 75 which is pretty impressive considering it's advertised for 26. Um, in the city that changed a little bit, it's advertised as 19. I've been getting about 18. Um, in some areas I've gotten about 19. So it's right dead on. But uh, on the highway, I definitely seem to receive a little bit more than it was advertised. It was actually a treat. Um, you know, you don't have to spend as much money to fill it up with gas. But that is, if when you buy a car like this, I assume um, gas is not gonna be uh, an issue or MPGs are not gonna be an issue given this is not a really expensive car, but it's not a cheap one either. So um, chances are you'll be able to afford the 93 octane that it requires uh, whenever it requires it. So now for this last part of the video, I wanted to give you guys some technical data um, on the differences between this Red Sport model and a uh, regular Lux model. So in this Red Sport model, you're going to get off, let's start in the engine base. So you're gonna get um, turbine speed sensors for your turbos, which keep the RPM of the turbine wheel in check. And if you're a tuner, if you're planning on tuning this car, it's a, one of those parameters your tuner can see, which will help them in tune this car very easily. Um, let's, let's move on to the cooling side. This car comes equipped with two water pumps instead of one to have a better flow of your um, intercooler system or your cooling system. Um, and you can actually, you can dissipate the heat a little bit better as opposed to having a single water pump. Um, the Red Sport model compared to a Lux is also gonna have an air-cooled oil cooler as opposed to a water-cooled air cooler, um, oil cooler, which is not 
that good in my opinion. It still overheats over to well over 220 degrees, um, as opposed to the Red Sport keeps it in check right around 203, 204 um, for the majority of the time, um, and it works quite well. I have it on my car because um, it's a Sport model and they came with it in 2017. Long story, but let's just do, keep the comparison to a Lux. Um, so let's move on to the back of the car. You also have a different gear ratio. In this Red Sport, you have a 3.11 instead of a 293. So what that means, let's 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 do a quarter mile comparison. Um, the 293 is typically going to have longer gears. So uh, by the end of the quarter mile, you should be by the end of fourth. In the Red Sport model, you should be shifting into fifth. So the um, higher number on the gear ratio is going to give you a shorter gear going on the track or just going on the road period just to give you guys some um, information on that so another thing that i found you uh, while searching uh, for the differences of this car and, and a, a regular lux model is going to be the fact that you have a 170 amp alternator in this car as opposed to a 150 amp alternator which is and i don't exactly know why the difference in this model um, if you guys know anything in the comments please comment below and let me know um, if you know why there's a reason there's a 20 amp difference in alternators between models, I would really be interested in finding out. Um, and last but not least, this is equipped with a big brake system, obviously, and with the red calipers, the red, the red S's for the badges, and uh, that's really that's really it. Um, I, I don't think there's a whole lot more to it. Um, those are some of the key things that you'll have in this Red Sport model. Over Lux, is it worth the extra money? It's debatable. Um, I'm just simply making this video for you guys to um, enjoy the content and also see my point of view and my take on this Red Sport 400. Um, but at the end of the day, if I could do it all over again, I would start probably with the uh, Red Sport simply because my Silver Sport was really um, a lot more expensive than some of the Red Sports that I've seen on the road, especially Q50s. So um, it's a better starting package but it's not necessary. If you really just want a fast car, you can throw a couple thousand at it and be fast. You can start out with a lower trim and be completely happy with what you receive. So um, I'm gonna end this video on a good note by saying thank you all who watch my channel. I appreciate you. Uh, my Instagram and Facebook pages link is in the description. Feel free to check it out, message me. Uh, any questions you may have, I get back to you guys, usually within 24 to 48 hours. And I definitely cannot be more thankful with the amount of support I've gotten on this channel. So thank you guys again for tuning in and watching. If you have any questions in regards to this car review regarding this 2019 Red Sport 400 rear wheel drive, please uh, put it in the comment section or message me on my Instagram or whatever, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. See you guys in the next video.